Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be talking about the new DJI Ronin S. This isn't going to be an unboxing video and I'm not going to really go into too much detail about any of the features. So if you're looking for a review video like that, I'd recommend finding a different one because there's plenty of them out there already. I'm mainly going to be just showing pure test footage. I'm going to do as little talking as possible and just play the footage so you guys can watch it and decide for yourself. So I'm just going to explain a few things really quick before I show all that. Uh, I shot everything in 24 frames a second, no 60 frames or 120 frames. I don't know why people are even bothering showing test footage at that frame rate because you can pretty much get away with shooting that handheld already. So everything's 24 frames a second. I shot it with the GH5 and the Metabone Speed Booster all on Canon lenses. And all the information I'll have down in the left hand corner during the shot so you know what lens I shot it on, if I had lens, uh, the image stabilization on the lens, if I had it on in the body, if I put any post warp stabilization on it as well, and even uh, the different techniques I was walking. Um, I did some with my knees bent doing the heel toe to technique to really take out some of those jitters. And then I did some just walking normally without any technique to really compare the two. The different kind of tests I put this thing through were ones like running full speed, I did jogging, uh, walking, low mode, I did a 360 parallax, I even uh, did a lens uh, focal length change uh, where I unbalanced the camera by changing the focal length. I balanced it to 24 and then I zoomed into 105 on my 24-105 lens. So you can see how that operated and if it affected it any differently. So without further ado, just here's the footage and then I'll kind of uh, give my little input if I need to explain anything along the way. All right, so a quick comment about those first few tests. You can already see how much of a huge difference it makes just to change up your walk. As I mentioned earlier, you wanna walk in a crouch position with your knees bent and using the heel toe technique. You also wanna keep your arms tucked into the side so you get rid of all those little jitters. That was the main thing that I noticed changing was just the walk. Yeah, the image stabilization in the lens and image stabilization in the body makes a difference too, but it wasn't as drastic of a difference like it was with just changing up your walk. So you wanna make sure you walk properly you're gonna get the most steady and buttery smooth footage from this thing Okay, so now just a quick comment about the focal length change tests. The first one I ran was with the 16 to 35 mil lens. I had the gimbal perfectly balanced to 16, zoomed into 35, didn't rebalance it, and then I ran the test. So when I had the gimbal perfectly balanced at 16, you can actually go into the Ronin app and you can run a balance test. So I went in, ran a balance test, and it said all three axes were perfectly balanced. It said excellent for all three. And then I zoomed into 35, ran another balance test, and it was saying two of the axes were excellent, and now it was saying 
the pitch was only good. So one of the axes wasn't balanced anymore. So then I ran the test and I didn't notice any difference in the performance actually. Um, these motors seem pretty strong. They weren't vibrating. There was no jitters. They weren't getting stuck, nothing like that. And you can see in the test footage, it seemed like it was running perfectly fine. Um, I don't know if I would, I'm not gonna suggest for you to do that. I think I'm fine with running it from a simple focal length change from 16 to 35, something like that. Um, DJI's manual doesn't recommend doing that. They say only operate the gimbal if it's perfectly balanced. So I'm gonna let you decide if you wanna do that or not. And then I took it even a step further with the 24 to 105 lens. I had the gimbal perfectly balanced at 24, ran a balance test, all three axes were excellent. Zoomed into 105, ran another balance test. Two of them were still excellent, and then one of them was only good. Operated the gimbal, no jitters, no vibrations, nothing. And you can see in the footage, it was perfectly smooth. And I was actually really impressed with that shot at 105. I've never been able to get that kind of shot with my glide cam. Um, so I think that was pretty amazing. Alright, that's all the tests that I have for this video. There's one last comment that I want to make about the very last shot, the one with the 7200 mil lens and doing the parallax. I was so blown away with that shot. It really impressed me. I did not expect it to be that stable and be that easy to capture it. I only practiced it three times before and then I shot it for the video, the fourth time, and it was perfectly stable. I was getting almost a Hollywood big budget level shot where you usually only see those in movies where they have a whole crew and dolly track and a dolly to get a shot like that. So that really impressed me and it just really, really did blow my mind.
All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you found this useful and it gave you a good sense of what the Ronin-S is capable of, what its strengths are, what its weaknesses are. I just wanted to put some test footage out there and let you all decide for yourselves what you think about it. And the footage speaks for itself of what it can do. So that's it. Um, my next video, I'm actually gonna be reviewing the follow focus on this thing with the GH5 with the Metabone Speed Booster and without it. So I actually haven't done it yet and I'm actually curious to see what, how it's gonna handle all that. So. See you in the next video.